Now again, a few more words to know and understand before we start looking at a calculator and seeing how we can do matrices with a calculator. The words I want to tell you about right now are listed over here, row echelon form and the row reduced echelon form. Sometimes it's written as reduced row echelon form. And what's the difference between the two of them? Okay, so here's the difference between row echelon form and the row reduced echelon form. Okay, the row reduced echelon form has ones on the diagonal and zero everywhere else in the problem. And then you have the numbers after the equal sign being whatever they want to be. Whereas the row echelon form has zeros under the diagonal and the other stuff in the matrix is just old, regular old numbers. Now, to be called either row echelon form or row reduced echelon forms, the numbers on this diagonal have to be one. Okay, so earlier we were doing some Gaussian elimination in the last section. We were basically kind of approaching the row echelon form. Although my diagonal didn't always have a one, sometimes it had a five or a three. So I was pretty close to row echelon form, but not exactly row echelon form. So if I wanted to get it into that form, it would take a few more steps. Okay. Now the calculator is capable of giving you both forms. The difference between the two forms is this, this one, the row echelon reduced is basically gonna tell you right away what the X is, right away what the Y is, right away what the Z is. There's no work involved. You just look at the screen and you decide X, Y, and Z. However, the row echelon form, it's kind of like what we did with the Gaussian elimination. The row echelon form just gets you halfway through and then you have to continue the rest of the problem by hand. So before we look at how to get these on this calculators, let's try to recognize if these problems are written in row echelon form or row reduced echelon form, or maybe neither. Okay, so first of all, to decide, I'm gonna look at the diagonal. So ignore everything here after the equal sign. We don't, we don't care about it. We just care about the coefficient matrix. Does it have ones everywhere? Yes. Now what's under the ones? It's a bunch of zeros. So this is gonna be the row echelon form, okay? Now looking at the second equation or the second problem, does it have ones on the diagonal? No. So that is neither row echelon form nor row reduced echelon form. The problem with that guy is the zero. It should not be a zero, it should be a one. So this is not any of the forms that we're describing in this section. What about the next guy? If I look at the problem right there, it has one, three, and one. Again, they're not all one, one, one. So that means we are in the scenario where it's neither because of the three. If that three was a one, by the way, we would be calling it a row echelon form because there's zeros underneath the ones, but the other numbers, who cares? But unfortunately, because of the three, again, it's not any of the formats that we like. Finally, the last equation or the last problem has one, one, one. There are zeros under and there are zeros above. And the numbers after the equal sign, who cares about them, right? Um, nobody pays attention to these numbers when we're describing the form. We just care about what's going on before the equal. And in this case, all the numbers are zero except the ones on the diagonal. That means we are dealing with a reduced row echelon form. That's what we're dealing with. All right, so that's basically the end of this question. Now let's start taking a look at how we can plug these problems into the calculator and how we can understand what the calculator is doing and we get answers. So turn on your calculator and once you turn it on, you're gonna need to find the matrix key. So different calculators have that key in different places. The TI-83s usually have it somewhere around here. They have a matrix button. The TI-84s, they don't have a dedicated button, so you have to go second and then click the X to the power of negative one. That gets you into this menu called the matrix menu. So the word is matrix. In the TI-83s, it's yellow, or sometimes it's actually printed on the key itself. For this one, it's in blue, and so it's right there. So what we want to do first is put the data into the calculator. We want to tell the calculator what the matrix is. So what we're going to do is go, after we enter the matrix menu, we're going to go twice to the right to where it says edit. 
and pick any of those names that you want. So these are different names, so you can have basically nine, cal nine matrices saved in your calculator. I'm gonna always pick the first option. And as you see right there, it says one by one. So that, what's that? that's what it wants. It wants the size of this matrix. So in order to get the size of the matrix, let's look back over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and write down the problem, 4x plus 2y equals to 11, then 3x minus y equal to 2. So let's extract the matrix out. What would the augmented matrix look like? So remember the augmented matrix just takes the numbers. 4, 2, 11. The second row is 3, negative. There's an invisible 1 right there. So keep in mind invisible 1s matter. And then 2. This is my augmented matrix. The equals were directly before 11 and 2. So I'm going to put the low line right there. This has two rows. And it has three columns. So this is a two by three matrix. So when I go to my calculator, the very first thing I'm going to do is tell the calculator two by three. So click two, enter, three, enter. And you can see my calculator automatically creates a matrix with a lot of zeros. Now we're just going to need to fill in the numbers by pushing the keys on your keyboard and then hitting enter. So four, two, and then 11, and then enter, three, enter. And then I need a negative one. So make sure you use the tiny little minus sign, not the big old minus sign. Tiny minus, that means negative. Then one, hit enter, then two, and then enter. And now once you have done all these steps, your matrix is saved forever into the calculator. So what we're going to do next is leave this menu. So we're going to go second, quit. Now, if you want to see the matrix that you just plugged in, you can click second matrix again. And without going left or right, just select the one that you want, let's say number one, and then hit enter. The calculator will tell you these are the numbers I memorized for your matrix. And as you can see, it doesn't show me the line right there before 11 and 2, but I have to just kind of remember it and recognize it mentally. So far, so good. All right, let's see. If I want to do Gaussian elimination, remember, I have to do it by hand. It takes forever. The calculator can do it in one split second. So here's how we could do it. Second matrix and this time we're going to do some math on the matrix so we're going to go math and it presents you with a lot of options so i'm going to just scroll down through the list and eventually you're going to see one command that says ref another command that says rref so what's the difference between the two of them the ref is the row echelon form this is the one that puts ones on the diagonal zeros under but leaves everything else alone the second one is the one that goes through all the way and it gives you ones on the diagonals zeros everywhere else so the last section we were doing ref problems so if i click right now ref on my screen so hit enter it's going to say what's the matrix so i'm going to need to type the name of the matrix so i'm going to go second matrix and then put matrix one close the parentheses and then just hit enter as you can see, the calculator gives me ones on the diagonal and it says zero under. And then the other numbers, who cares? So we can copy it to the paper and then solve for X and Y. Or if we want to have the full solution on the screen, we can go like this, second matrix, then math again, and this time find the RREF option and then tell the calculator matrix A again. And this time it will say 1, 0, 1.5, 0, 1, 2.5. And we'll have to understand what those numbers mean. So let me first copy the numbers onto my PDF so we can kind of keep track of it. And I'll explain to you how to get the answers X and Y from this. So going back to the problem that we started with, if I look at the original setup, our original equation or our original uh, matrix that I made, the four and three were the letters or the numbers for the x letter the two and negative one were the numbers in front of the y variable and then there was the equal sign and there were numbers after the equal so the calculator 
keeps the same format for you. So these numbers that you put in here are the X numbers. These numbers are the Y numbers. Again, these are the X numbers and the Y numbers. So the calculator keeps the same order that you typed in. So if you type in your XY wrong, the calculator is going to get your XY wrong also because it doesn't know what you're typing in. It just knows the numbers and it just does something to them. Now, if we understand, if we want to understand what this matrix here is saying, it's saying basically that X plus, sorry, I think it was, I got the wrong number. That is supposed to be 0 0.5 right there, not 0. So this first equation basically says that X plus 0 0.5 Y is supposed to be 2.75. And the second equation basically tells me that 1 Y is equal to 2.5. So knowing this information, I can get the Y, and once I know Y, I can plug it there to get the X. So that's one way to do a problem, but you know, who cares? If we're doing it on a calculator, might as well go all the way through and look at this equations, or do look at this system. So what is that saying? That's saying that X plus 1.5, sorry, X is 1.5. There's no Y, the Y is gone, it's zero. The second equation is saying zero X and one Y is 2.5 so this automatically gives you the y and automatically gives you the x so that's why we like this technique so the solution in this problem is going to be x 1.5 and y 2.5 another way of saying this is to say 3 half for the x and 5 halves for the y and usually my math lab and all these systems they want you know answers to be in exact form so you're going to need to type in some fractions but as you can see, this is powerful. Now, what is the calculator doing? It's doing the same thing that we did in the last section to get these answers. It's interchanging rows, multiplying one of the rows by a number, adding it to a second row, or multiplying one of the rows by a random number and just leaving it like that. So that's how it's accomplishing these tasks. That's how it's getting the REF matrix and the RREF matrix. Now, you don't have to know how to do it, but you need to know how to get the answers. And the calculator makes it super simple.